Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. He's an NCAA All-American from the University of Wisconsin, school record holder at Wisconsin, the 200 free, 200 IM, and all five relays. Uh, a multiple-time NCAA All-American honorable mention. And now he he was recently training at Texas A&M as a postgrad. He's now training in his hometown of Houston, uh, please welcome Brett Penfold. Brett, how's it going, man? Hello. Nice to uh, finally be on the podcast. I've seen a few of these before. Um, I was watching Matt Grieber's not that long ago because I saw that he was like in real estate. So I was like, oh, cool. Someone else in it. <laughs> so let's, uh, it, since you brought it up, let's touch on that first. Um, you recently started, you, you, re- you recently got into real estate. Um, tell me about what, what's interesting about that to you, how you got into it and, and how it's going so far. Uh, so like, when um the covids started hitting like after the meet at um in iowa the pro series in iowa uh we weren't training or doing anything and i was like oh i'm kind of running low on money right now i need to figure out something to do Uh, i got plenty of free time right now and i was like oh my mom's in real estate she's done a little bit about that during her time i was like might as well try that uh i did the the course is online, which was really lucky. One of my friends, uh, he started getting into real estate, but he couldn't do his uh, courses or the exams online. So he had to wait until everything started opening back up again. So I was able to complete my whole prerequisites to be able to become a licensed real estate agent like during the whole lockdown. So I got pretty lucky in that. And I, um, I recently got in touch with two of my high school buddies back in, um, like a couple months ago and they'll be signing, uh, a lease agreement this month. So I'll be getting two commissions in. So it wasn't that long. So I got my license like May ish and like a couple months I got, them to contact me through my Instagram and now I'll be like they'll be moving in here shortly and hopefully I'll get that commission check sometime soon so that'll be nice uh but I got in touch with a few guys from USC actually uh, Michael Domagala and uh David Morgan so they invest in real estate and they were calling me to see like what there is in Houston to actually invest in Houston real estate. So that was pretty cool getting in touch with them again. So like, that's what I've been up to lately with real estate. Yeah. What, I mean, what, um, so you said your mom did it. Um, Mm -hmm. I know little to nothing about real estate. Um, so tell me, tell me what you find interesting about it. Um, I mean, I'm guessing you probably have some prior knowledge considering you had a parent doing it. Um, but you know, you you said you wanted money and it seems like, it seems like a lucrative, um, career path, but is, is that something you always had interest in or, um, is that kind of so, a new thing for you? Uh, it's kind of a new thing for me. My mom didn't really do much with her real estate license besides buy and sell like some of our homes that we uh, moved to. Um, but I had like an interest in HGTV. I like looked at homes sometime on my free time. So it was kind of like, oh, like I enjoy doing this stuff on my free time. Might as well see if I can try to make a like a little bit of a side career on this. And like, while I do swimming, like I can do this. It's not like a nine to five job. So, which it can be, but like, I can't really do those nine to five jobs while I'm swimming like full time, basically. So, yeah, but, um, I'm 
with the champions real estate group so it's kind of like they put you on your own term you can do whatever you want like you can get some guidance from them but it's kind of like do your own thing so i think i probably should have gone with someone a little bit like more mentoring but uh some of those places you have to pay like monthly fees of like 200 dollars a month or something like that and they want you to have like a full year's like uh like wage just to like make sure that you can handle like not getting any income in during a full year and still be steady so uh, but yeah it's working out so far since i got two right away absolutely um, yeah i miss a few friends got their uh bought some houses right before i got my license so i was like oh just miss those two uh, my brother actually bought his place like a couple days before I got my license. I was like, oh, no, oh, there's <laughs> so many missed opportunities there. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully there can be more. Um, as you mentioned, uh, you're back in, in Houston and in the Houston area. Um, mm -hmm. How long have you been back there? Did, were you planning on staying in Madison for a while after you graduated or was your plan kind of always to come back to Houston? So I was trying to search for a job up in Wisconsin. I was working with the university in the um, IT department there. And then I was also coaching McFarland Spartan Sharks up in uh, McFarland, Wisconsin. So uh, it went, like I loved it there. Um, the pool wasn't, the new pool wasn't um, being built yet. So we still had the surf open Uh and like right when I think I finished like a year afterwards, they like um, cleared house. So it would have been different because I would have had like a new coach during that time, um, which I, I don't know. Um, some of the guys say I would have done really good under Yuri, but uh, we never know because I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um. um. So, so, so you ended up back in Houston. Um, what were you ever, did you ever step aside from swimming? Was there a point when you were like, okay, I'm done swimming. And then you came back to it, um, and started training with A&M or were, were you kind of always in the pool during that transition? I was actually not. So, uh, what was it in 2000 and 17 world championships um i was like if i don't make a team this summer i'm i'm done i'm like so i think i placed like 17th in the two free or 18th or whatever um so i didn't make it and i was like pretty set clear on my like okay i'm done like this is it uh i then worked at the university and McFarland. I swam a few times with the McFarland Spartan Sharks. I did like a few relays. I got the 100 IM state record during that time. <laughs> yeah. I trained like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I went like 49.1, I believe. Uh, and it was, um, I think I trained like two weeks before that, like only like three or four days or something like that. I was like, that's not bad. I'll take that. <laughs> Yeah, And I did a few relays with the guys like Danny Kruger, uh, Ryan O'Donnell, and Jake Lars Larson, I think. So they needed some people on the relays. I think they had like uh, Derek Toomey on a okay. different relay. So <laughs> nice. we went head to head. I think I got them, <laughs> but I'm not really sure. Um, so, so you were training there for a while and then what – you know, what, what sparked the comeback? Uh, so I was like, I'm going to save my money, go live back with my parents and find a job down in Houston. Uh, I actually found my, um, last full-time job off of Craigslist, which was, I was kind of like, mm, I'm not really sure how legit this is, but I went to the place. It was a really nice building, uh, family, own business uh called accumulators it was uh good i was like the head it person of the company which is kind of hard because like i'm new to all this stuff still so 
it was like a learning curve. Um, yeah, so I did that for about a year. And then it was like 2019 um, summer. I was I was watching like Worlds or um, the Nationals. And I was like, man, I really miss that. Like I'm just sitting on my butt. Like I'm making money, but like I miss that thrill, like racing people, just getting back out there. Um, so I started going to a YMCA just to get like back into shape. And then like a month later, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm like, trials is coming up. Might as well do it while I'm young. Like, I can't do this in the future. So um, I contacted my old coach, Allison BB to see like, hey, like, who should I reach out to to see like, to train me to Olympic trials. And she told me Jason. So um, I reached out to Jason and like, they were like, sure, like come out here, do a little tryout. I was like kind of nervous for that tryout, uh, but it wasn't that bad. And then like, once I got there, oh man, they whooped me in the shape real quick. I lost like 10 pounds, like in like a month or two. Uh, like I was exhausted. I had to, like, I was limping to my car most of the time because I just was just done after each and every single practice it was rough but I was able to catch up pretty fast which was really good because I made it to U.S. Opens in 2019 I didn't do so hot there but like I still got back up to that level pretty quick because I think um I started off with like uh man I had this up uh, I think I started off at like 52, yeah, 52 in October, and then I got down to 50, and then in March, I got down to 49, like 0.01 off my best time. So I was doing something right, like that was really close to my best time without a full taper, so we'll see what I can do in uh, 2021, got to keep so up the work. <laughs> So it sounds, it sounds like, you know, you, you were, you were gaining some momentum. You had some steam going. Tell me, tell me about the A&M practices. Cause I've been there for a couple. They're always intense. They always have a lot of energy. Jason brings so much energy to the pool deck. Um, but tell me about that tryout and you, you said it wasn't that bad, but then once you finally got going, it's like, Oh man. Yeah. So like the tryout was like, just a few hundreds like on like a, like a pretty easy interval i think it was like 115 or something like that just to see if i can do it how good my endurance was um because obviously i was so out of shape beforehand <clears throat> but like once we got into the practices it was like i did a few like 30 minute practices an hour just because like I can't just go a full two hours right away. So I was easing into it. But then once I got, I think I did like two or three practices, like not full practices. And then after that, I just got right in with them. And I was just like, go, 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 trying to make like the intervals that they set. Sometimes I went on the slower intervals, but like a couple weeks after I was like, okay, I got to go in these intervals. This is what I used to do. I would fall off sometimes, but not all the time, which was good. Um, but it was different because I was doing more sprint workouts compared to what I did at Wisconsin. I was doing more mid-distance work. I would occasionally do some sprint work, but I also did some distance work at Wisconsin. So it was a complete change working more on sprinting than distance or mid-distance work. So w would you say your focus was pretty much the hundred free? Yeah. Okay. Like now it's like hundred free. There's six spots open for that relay. So yeah, that's like the best opportunity. I do some backstroke here and there because everyone loves backstroke. <laughs> I think <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> um, so Tell me about, tell me about the training group there, especially the sprint group. Cause they've got, uh, some guys who, who I know have some pretty good speed. 
Um, you know, who, who are you battling in practice? So I was uh, battling Adam Coster and uh, Mike. And, like, it's a shame that they're done swimming. I was trying to make Adam stay longer. I think Mike said he's going to try to uh, come back for trials or something, but I don't think he's going to, like, be training super hard. So I we're going to miss them, but – it's fun swimming against Shane. Like I race against him sometimes like race because like he's killing me in those practices. Uh, so I got to catch up to him. Um, but he's not usually in the sprint group with us. Not most of the time. And then, um, uh, we call him Vegas. So we race him, uh, in the two are like the pace work. So he's good to race against for the 200 pace. I do that occasionally. Uh, like two free seller, he's, I think his best, yeah, his best time is faster than mine, but still a pretty good race for the pace. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, so it's, you know, they've got a solid training group out there. Like you mentioned, Shane Casas, Adam Coster, who's done now, Mike Thibber, who's, who's questionable, but, um, you know, they had a lot of speed. Um, and so, uh, so tell me about where you were in March when COVID kind of hit. You said you were 0.01 um, off your best 100 free at the Des Moines Pro Swim. Training-wise, like, were you feeling pretty good at, during that period? Uh, so we had a meet right beforehand, which I, I didn't get my Olympic trial cut until that meet the week before. And then so I was like, okay, let's see what I can do with like a few days rest. I was still pretty tired because dealing with that, but I felt like I was in pretty good shape. Um, but with three months left until trials, it was cutting it kind of close based on my progression. I was doing pretty good, but it is like almost a blessing that it got pushed back and it's actually happening. So I get more time to train and then I can see what I can do next year yeah and so yeah uh, as you mentioned you're back in houston you're training with a club team now um tell tell me about your time during covid um you know what's what's the training been like uh what's training with the club team been like are you, do you plan on heading back to AM at some point um what's what's your deal so uh i can't remember exactly the date that we got um, everything started shutting down, but once that kind of hit, I was like, might as well go back home, uh, relax there, make sure my family's safe. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's a little dry. <clears> throat> uh, we, um, during that time I did the real estate since there was nothing else to do. And then, uh, I like Jason was staying in contact with us and Jay trying to make sure that we can do something to get back in the water. And then Shaq opened up. Uh, they, uh, he was nice enough to let me swim with them for five months now. So, or like almost five months now. I do plan on going back to AM, but, um, I don't think their club team is allowed back yet. So once they're allowed, I will be able to go back. Nice. Uh, very cool. And so uh, now that you are, you know, back home, um, let's, let, let's get into uh, a, a bit of your history. Um, How did you end up at Wisconsin from uh, being from Houston? Oh, uh, it's kind of a weird story. Um, so I wasn't planning on looking at Wisconsin at all. Um, a few of my friends actually, <clears throat> Ken and Clifton and uh, Will Lacone actually took a trip there. I was like, uh, they told me about it and I was like, hmm, they got a pretty good engineering program. So I'll look at it. And they were a pretty good team as well. 
So I took a trip there. It was like on a Monday, Tuesday, so it wasn't a normal recruiting trip. <clears throat> and uh, I loved it there. And then I also loved Virginia as well. Um, but, like, obviously you can only choose one school. So I told the Eddie Reese that I wasn't going to be going there since he was my third choice. So I had to leave it up to Wisconsin and Virginia. <laughs> And uh, Eddie actually said, like, hey, like, what are you choosing between? Maybe I can help you out. I told him the two schools, and he's like, hands down, Wisconsin. I was like, that's a pretty good, <laughs> like, reason to go to Wisconsin then. Like, <laughs> if Eddie Reese is saying that, like, it's probably a good option. So I told them that I was committing to Wisconsin, and then Cannon Clifton showed up there as well. So it was like two Houston boys back at it again, racing each other, but in practice. <laughs> that's that is a pretty cool story, and <laughs> that's pretty cool that Eddie helped you out, even though you had, you had given him a no. That's uh, it's it's pretty neat. Um, yeah. So t- you know, tell me about your time at Wisconsin. As as I said earlier, school record holder in the two hundred free. You, you, you were 133.3 in the 200 free, 43.2 in the 100 free, uh, 143.6 in the 200 IM, where you also hold the school record. Um, so, I mean, it seems like you had a lot of success um, at Wisconsin. You know, what was uh, swimming there and training there like for you? Uh, the swimming there was great. We had a great uh, guys team uh, and, like, the girls team, like, combined program so it's pretty like the same as club team uh the training was pretty brutal like wearing a nose clip all the time that was very different even for freestyle and i am like what what brought that about for you uh our coach wanted to do it uh whitney wanted us to do that i didn't really understand it, but <laughs> I was like, okay, like that's fair. I do backstroke, so it works for that. I am. You got backstroke in there. Uh, freestyle, kind of weird, but it's doable. <laughs> okay. And then we did a lot of spinning on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I was not the best at spinning. Like, I like cycling, but... Mm-hmm. A stationary bike is completely different because I'd rather be outside or doing something than being in a closed closet that's like super heated. Or when we got out of the closet with no air conditioning, we went to the spin room, but then we had to put our sweatshirts on. So, yeah, that was pretty rough. I would be sweating like a ton and then I would be like cramping up during practice, which isn't the best. So, you got to stay hydrated in that. <laughs> um, interesting. So spinning, nose clips. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned you trained with Canyon Clifton. What do, was there, um, you know, t- were there workouts you remember? Were there practices you remember where you did really bad or were that were particularly brutal that stand out to you during your time at Wisconsin? Yeah. There was, like, one practice where, like, we had to do long course hundreds on, like, 130 or something. And, like, it wasn't, like, supposed to be too hard. But I was going, like, 120, like, twos to, like, 125s. And I was just, like, I can't move. I can't do this. Freestyle? I think I, yeah. I think I uh, I got kicked out because I was just like I can't I can't do this like I'm too dead to do this right now. Um, I don't think I got kicked out, but I think he was just like, "Hey, like maybe you should just relax, like go rest up now." <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. You're you're a one you're a forty three hundred freestyle short course. You're a forty nine long course at a freestyler what what happened how, how are you going 122s i don't know i run into issues like that sometimes i like well at like club practice here in houston i was going like 26s for freestyle like pace i was like short course and i was just like 
this is not good. I we'll see what tomorrow is like. <laughs> so I run that, into those. I that's interesting. My um, I th- I mean I think everyone has bad days, but I think you know some people are really good at training at, at at this level all the time, and some people like my my brother who still swims. He's you know thirty years old. He's he's someone who can really, really struggle in practices sometimes just to like, you know, get, get to, get to the baseline. Um, are you, are you one of those people who some days, like if it's just not on, you're going to, you're going to give 110%, but that, that baseline is just not going to happen for you. Uh, I wouldn't say like that. I would say I would, once I get into those kind of ruts, I just like, okay, just focus on technique work and maybe that'll just like improve the time just from improving the technique work or making sure I'm really focused on doing it right. Or I just want to switch strokes to something different to like, I sometimes switch the backstroke and if that backstroke's not doing so hot either. I'll switch the fly. Last resort is breaststroke, which I try not to do so (laughs) the kids on the club team want me to do breaststroke and i'm like uh if it's short course that's okay because i can just do the pullouts but long course not so much no i don't (laughs) want to do that i'll do fly i can use my arms that's for sure but so i mean you you are a 143 200 i am in college with was as uh, on the breaststroke leg when you raced the 200 IM, was it basically just try to do make my pullouts as long as possible and get through it? Yeah, basically just trying to make sure that I can not do many strokes with that. Just stay underwater. That's where I get the speed from. What we're we're under? I mean, I know you mentioned the nose clip. We're underwater is a big emphasis for you in college. Yeah, uh, they wanted us to do like six kicks off each wall um, for everyone. So that was kind of a weird situation because like uh, I think we had some of our milers do that as well. And I was just like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't think that'll help in the long run. But like I think uh, we kind of lost focus. We just tried to do the numbers instead of actually the quality. So I think it might have hindered us a little bit Mm -hmm. like I know his intentions were good on that um but like you can't really do that for a miler and for uh, a hundred freestyle and like you're gonna get behind on that unless you have just amazing underwaters like (laughs) that's not gonna help you that makes sense I yeah I, I don't I if I saw someone swim a mile and take six kicks off every wall in that race, I would be so impressed. Uh, and then if they win a best time, I would be <laughs> even more impressed. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> so um, tell me about, you know, you, you grew up in Houston. You mentioned Cannon Clifton, Will Lacone were two of your good friends, two of your competitors who, uh, you know, the, in their own right, very both great swimmers. Mm -hmm. Um, what was growing up in Houston swimming like for you? It was rough because we had a bunch of like fast swimmers here in Houston, but then once we got, uh, like older and we started going to national meets, it's like, oh, there's more than just Texas swimmers that are fast. (laughs) Cause, uh, like we had like Graham Bach, um, who was great, uh, swimmer. He went to Stanford, um. And just like some of those older guys, even from my own club team, like they would beat me in the IM stuff and backstroke stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, it was just very eye opening once I started going to those junior national meets and national meets. Um, Even like uh, having Simone as well during my practices and she would kick my butt sometimes. Uh, Not the best feeling, but. (laughs) Hey, stuff happens, right? <laughs> so, so, so you swam on the same club team as Simone, same coach. Were you guys in the same class? Uh, no, she was a year younger than me. Okay, so you're a year or, older. Yeah, a year younger than me, I believe. Okay, 
yeah, I mean, tell me about training with Simone. I mean, she's the, you know, one of the greatest American freestylers in history, Olympic champion, yeah. two-time world champion, and hundred, you know, what, what, yeah. I mean, you, you get your butt kicked sometimes, which I think is understandable, but, um, what, what was training with her like on, on the day to day? Uh, she's very disciplined. Um, I like to goof off quite a bit, so it was kind of like brought us in the middle sometimes or like, or bring me over to the more disciplined side sometimes, but, uh, yeah, like helping her with like some, the technique work, uh, like the starts and turns and stuff, um, was like fun to do. Uh, Allison thought I had pretty good technique. I think I lost some of that while I went to college just trying to get stronger and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she, she always was ready to go in the water, like pushing her limits. Uh, I do that too. I just was like to have fun as well. And like a little goof off most of the time. Uh, I still did my work and stuff, but I'd like to make sure I'm having fun while I'm doing it. Yeah. It's, I mean, it seems like a good balance. I, from, from, from the very, uh, from observing Simone at swim meets, she seems exceedingly disciplined. And I think, you know, obviously yeah. that pays off for her. Um, yeah. but that's, that's super cool to, 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 for me. That's super cool to hear that just Simone beats guys in practice. And I was also like a twig. I wasn't <laughs> able to lift that much when I was in high school. We actually didn't lift anything in high school. I started okay. lifting once I got to college. So I got a little muscle on me now. I think <laughs> I like to think. Um, so, so wrapping up here uh, to, to, to bring our conversation to a close moving forward. What are you thinking um, for the next couple months? Uh, obviously you don't know, when a &M's club swimmers are going to be able to come back and train. Um, so you've, you've got real estate kind of going, you're training with the club team in Houston. Um, what are you thinking for, for yourself for these next couple months? Uh, I'm just hoping I can get back to a &M as soon as possible. Get Jason to start training me again. Um, like Gilbert's doing a great job right now. Um, but I'm like, would like to do some meets coming up here. I think the U S open is doing virtual meet. Um, I don't know if I'll be going to that like a hundred people at each venue. Uh, but I just want to get back into the racing and start training like with the college guys again. Um, and then see what I can do in June uh, Olympic trials next year. Well, awesome. Uh, Brett Penfold, ladies and gentlemen, Brett, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. You've been listening to the swim swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take swim swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.